Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Last week, we had our minds blown away by Mr. Charles Aibona, who gave us a detailed understanding of the four temperaments. If you missed this, head over to the PLOS TV Africa's YouTube channel whenever you get a chance. That show and the last eight shows is there for your viewing pleasure. Today, my conversation on love languages with Dr. Alaba and Mrs. Tinuke Faole will hopefully give you some fresh ideas on how to show that special someone how much they mean to you in a language they understand. Because as we know, if two people communicating with each other in two different unknown languages, e.g. me speaking Hausa, which I can't speak, and you speaking Igbo, and neither one of us understands what the other is saying, we're going to be totally confused. Dr. Alaba is a dentist and medical professional, and Mrs. Tinuke is a legal professional, and together they are the founders of Optimum Families an initiative born out of the deep desire to help couples get back to that beautiful place where a previously turbulent relationship turns into a blissful one. Welcome to you both, and I look forward to a powerful mind-shifting discussion on this relationship make-or-break topic. Welcome, Dr. and Mrs. Fawoli. So, thank you. Thank you very much. It is awesome to have you both here with us. And I would like to kick off our discussions by asking, what are love languages? And did you both always know each other's love languages? Well, thank you very much, Ferran. It's a pleasure to be on this platform uh, today. We've been looking forward to such an opportunity. We want to thank you very much and applaud your effort. And we're talking about love languages, but I think where we need to start out from is to understand love. Love is, is a word that has been thrown around in different ways. And uh, uh, for each individual, love is different. Yes. But love is actually an expression of inner feeling, uh, feeling of uh, being loved and uh, uh, being admired. And that is exactly what love is. And you're talking about language of love. When you talk about language, we are talking about communication, and uh, we all understand communication to be uh, a way of, uh, of passing information, and the information we understand, it's not complete until the person on the other end gives you a cue that they truly get what you are saying. And so in this regard, we're talking about the language of love and it has to be specific to the individual, just like you talked about AUSA and uh, Igbo language. We can also talk about German language as well as even Spanish. Uh, and so if your, your partner understands love in a way, you want to maximize that and you really want to use the language your partner understands. And so uh, from the book, written by one of the foremost uh, clinical psychologists yeah. by the name of Gary Chapman, yeah. the idea of five languages came about okay. and uh, the subject matter is not, uh, is not exclusive or exhaustive in of itself. Okay. And so you can have more than five love languages, but uh, the five ones that have been identified by Gary Chapman are number one, you talk about words of affirmation okay. that is speaking words that the other person loves. The other one is quality time. Okay. Uh, the third one is receiving gifts. The fourth one is acts of service. And uh, the final one is uh, physical touch. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that very detailed explanation. The very first thing to bear in mind is, like you said, language is a communication and love is a feeling and an action, I must say, as well. So thank you very much for explaining the five main love languages to us. So my next question is this. Why is it important for partners to understand each other's love languages? What is the relevance in the success of a relationship? OK, so. When you have a relationship, communication is the basis 
of that relationship going well. Okay. So you can't say you have a relationship with someone and you don't speak to them or you speak to them and they don't understand what you're saying. Okay. So when we're talking about love languages, it's very important for you to be able to communicate with the other person if they understand what you're saying. And then it makes them feel loved. So in, in love languages, if you speak in and someone doesn't understand what you're saying, yes. they feel like you don't love them. Yes. So you actually have to speak the other person's language before they know that they are loved. Okay, okay, I see what you mean. But I'm going to take you back a bit. So you say you have to speak the person's language so they know what you mean. So we talked about these five love languages, acts of service, quality time, receiving of gifts, um, physical touch, and I can't remember what the first one was. Um, what was the first one again? Words of affirmation. I Words think of affirmation. That. So if okay. there's a couple and say one couple has words of affirmation and receiving gifts as their love language and the other couple the other half of the couple has um, acts of service as their love language how do the two make sure that they are understanding each other's love languages okay so what you have to concentrate on is using your spouse's love language to speak to them so for instance my husband's love language, at least one on the top, is acts of service. Okay. So doing things for him, you know, my husband would tell you, if you come to his party and maybe you come with $1,000 and you give him, he will appreciate. But even more so, if you come in early and you help him set up the chairs, do all the hard work, he remembers that more because his love language is acts of service. So that's what you have to do for him. Yes. For me, it's physical touch. Yes. So it's not necessarily doing things for me, but holding me, you know, and all of that gets my love language. And I have to tell you, it's interesting. Uh, we started out in our 20s. We got married in our 20s. We lived in Nigeria and my husband couldn't even touch me in public. Now I can do that. But, but now <laughs> that he's 60 years old, he feels comfortable doing that because he has learned the love language over the years and is practicing it. Wonderful. So I'm now going to go to this thing you've just said about living in Nigeria. Does the Nigerian culture, the average Nigerian man, does he even understand what you're saying when you're talking about love languages? Well, coming from my own experience, it was something completely foreign to me, uh, but it has always been there. This, uh, this principle or, or the concept of love language has always been there, but we did not know it exactly to be so. And so you just want to do things that are pleasing to your partner. In terms of the culture that we come from in Nigeria, our culture uh, is such that men are trained to be stoic. Uh, men are trained to be mucho, not to be so expressive. And so when they see men on the outside being that expressive, uh, it's something that uh, is completely strange in the environment. But when you really learn these better ways of doing things, which we had the benefit of doing since we came to, to this country here in America, uh, it's something that we really need to interject back into our system so that we can unlearn some of the things that we've been taught. And quite a number of us men have been handicapped because of the upbringing that we have come from and we are not able to express, we are not able to cry when we really need to cry. Really and unfortunately, Quite a number of men have gone to their grave with all these ideas and not being able to be vulnerable and to share their emotions. And uh, I think it's a thing that we really need to bring back and to, to interject into our system. Thank you. So thank you so much, Dr. Alaba. You see, so here's the thing for me. There are two very interesting things you said. You said when you were in Nigeria, you were a particular way. When you moved to America, you became a different way because you learned different things. So are you saying that if the person doesn't have the opportunity to travel out of Nigeria, they are stuck in this stoic way of doing things? No, no, no. The, see, what is happening is that the world has become even a lot smaller than the time that we were growing up. Well, everybody is, uh, has access to the internet and uh, the social media. And so this is about educating yourself and understanding that uh, your relationship as mm. husband and wife mm. is, is the only relationship that God has invested 
to dramatically change this world. When we understand this paradigm, then we are able to put into practice and to change things. You don't have to travel anywhere because there are certain things that I see that are coming from the, uh, from the Nigerian space that I don't even see here and they're so advanced. So you don't have to be anywhere, but you just have to have the willingness uh, to be teachable. <laughs> you have the willingness to, to, to change. Change is something that is very scary to a lot of us, but you have to be out there be, to be vulnerable and to be ready to, to adopt changes. Farrah, can I so add to much. that? Yes. We have, we have five minutes left, but I, I, there are a couple of questions I still need to ask. So um, can you please okay. add to that? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. okay, yeah. I just wanted to say that it's actually not only the Nigerian factor. Actually, you can live in Nigeria, have never left Nigeria, and do these things if you yeah, open your mind to learn. And, you know, I always give the example of my parents. Husband and I talked about it this morning already. They are 86 and 88. But the way they've lived their life, their married life, never left Nigeria is really what we're talking about because they read all these books exactly. and they just applied whatever knowledge exactly. they had. So the, so, the, yeah, so the, thing that, that the thing that I'm taking from what you both said is you have to be ready to learn, you have to be ready to unlearn, and you also have to be ready to, you have to be willing to actually educate yourself on what a better quality relationship looks like. And so I want to very quickly ask, if there's a couple that do not understand each other's love languages, what is the worst case scenario? Because those are the things we're trying to avoid. Well, the, the what scenario is when you don't understand, uh, that means there could be communication breakdown because we talked about the, 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 the language of love needs to be understood. And so what the worst scenario is for the couple to separate and to be frustrated and uh, to think that their marriage is not going anywhere. But I want to assure you, just like my wife said, if there is a will, there is always a way. Mm. And so because we all come into this uh, arena not equipped with all these tools, when we are ready to practice these tools, things can actually be better. Thank you so much. So would you say that love languages should be taught from a very early age? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if all of us were educated about it, it wouldn't be difficult to be able to practice on our spouse. Even our children, we need to actually know our children's love languages and relate to them that way so that you don't deal with each child the same way. And when we educate our children that way, then they can prosper in their relationships. So yes. It's something that should be taught from early Ex on. Excellent. So I normally would ask a final question where I ask my guests to please give me three short sentences on how couples can implement love languages in their relationship so they have a better quality relationship. So maybe we both will speak on that. I think the first thing is that we need to seek to understand, you know, we don't want to have mediocre relationships. We want to have relationships that are thriving and that are enjoyable. And so we need to seek what makes my spouse happy. And, and we can ask, if we don't know that already, we can just ask, you know, what can I do that really, really makes you happy? And I would like to do that. And it can be any of the five or it could even be something outside of that. Great. Uh, another area that we need to invest in is uh, to, to have a group of people, like support group, Mm -hmm. that you can share some of this information together. Yes. What we have done here in Atlanta, Georgia, is that we have a group that we meet every month and we discuss subject matters like this and it has actually transformed our marriages. And uh, uh, we have also invested in an annual uh, marriage retreat. Actually, we are in one right now. We started yesterday evening and uh, we've, done, we've been doing this for the past 17 years uninterrupted. Wow. It is only this year that we are going uh, virtual on it. Wow. So we need to invest uh, and uh, begin to practice this and we, uh, new tools. And we need to be ready to grow. We need to be ready to change our mindset. Yes. We need to be ready to take in new things. If we want to see something different, then we must be ready to do something different. Thank you so much. In a very short amount of time, we've actually been able to cover quite a lot. And I will say that from a lot of the topics that we've been discussing over the last few weeks, 
all the dots are connected. Last week we talked about temperaments. Now we're talking about love languages. You know, all the dots are connected and it is excellent to know that there are people out there who understand these things better than we do and can help us navigate through this thing called relationship. Dr. Alaba, Mrs. Tinuke, thank you so much, Dr. Alaba, Mrs. Tinuke Fowley. Thank you so much for taking the time to discuss with us this morning. I knew I had to wake you up very early, so I'm really grateful that you took the time out. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest Thank of your you day. Thank you so much Thank for you having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Up with Thank us you. next is Dolly Phillips, our fitness expert. <laughs>